Hello everybody, welcome to another knockoff review. In today's video, we're taking a look at the knockoff of the MP59 Rhinox. Uh, it's one of these kind of questionable knockoffs. It's arrived exactly the same time as he's got a reissue. But uh, on paper, this is a KO version of Rhinox. We do have an embossed box there. Really nice kind of shine, high glossy image on the underside here. Nothing is embossed on here. This is just a kind of plain print and it does look slightly offset. Maybe that's my eyes. Uh, that looks uh, really kind of jaggedy. Now, I don't have the original version of this to compare it to, but if you do, I'm hoping that uh, you'll see some of these and you say, oh yeah, that's clearly, that's clearly a knockoff. <laughs> uh, there is a very good in-depth review. I'll link it below where they compare the two. Uh, yeah, this does look like it's just been printed on. It doesn't look like your normal kind of Takara. And I believe, I mean, look at that. You've got some, I think the grading, uh, the corrugation goes the opposite way. It's what Takara does as well. That's how you can normally tell. But yeah, this does seem like a slightly cheaper print, but it gives us an idea of what you get in here as well. Look, we've got Rhinox, his Cheetor and Primal, his Beast Mode, uh, his, his Butt. And then we've got him in his Bot Mode there. We've got the ability for Primal to ride him. And then we've got various weapons, accessories, cards, and instructions. Let's crack him open. Before we take a look at Rhinox, let's just take a quick look at these KO accessories. So this is the Spark. Yeah, and this can be untabbed from here and this can tab in to his hand as well in his bot mode so we can carry it. We have the device. There we go. Again, got that tab there which can go into his hand. We have the mounting adapter. We have the alternative faceplate, and we have one of his guns. Uh, the other one should, he says, be inside him because you can mount one inside for storage. Again, got that nice handle which allows him to grip. We get a collector's card. And we get a set of instructions as well. Oh, let's take a look at Rhinox. He is shiny, it's big, he's funky. They've really kind of nailed that cartoon aesthetic. Looks very, very much like his CGI counterpart. These are a little bit untapped out of the box, aren't they? But look at that. Love the fact we can move his ears. He's got that jaw, which can come down. There. Look at that. Too much is being revealed of you, Rhinox. Too much to be revealed. Look at that, that's nice. I mean, there's a lot of panels, not quite as many as Dinobot, but there's still a lot nonetheless. But I think it still pulls off that kind of animation look. It's just this side, isn't it? It doesn't want to tab in as nicely. Maybe it's one like one of the kind of factory seconds. Maybe they're doing that again. You get a second and they'll just uh, repackage it up, print their own binder boxes. But yeah, that's nice. Now for a comparison, like I said, I don't have the original 
MP version, but I do have the oversized kingdom version, uh, which they went with that kind of gold look. Size-wise, they're very similar. Uh, kingdom actually comes up a little bit smaller, even for an oversize. And if you look, uh, they've obviously gone way more for that kind of realism look in comparison, albeit he is kind of a goldy brown. But it gives you gives you an idea. Uh, there is a price difference. I believe the Kingdom was still somewhat cheaper, but doesn't anywhere it doesn't have anywhere near the articulation and levels of kind of sculpt that the KO MP does. I mean, that's props to the MP guys, isn't it? But. That's, that's pretty good still. I mean, as much as I love this, I mean, this is a really good figure and I've got this in bot mode and in Rhino mode. I think he's gonna be replaced. Here he is alongside Primal, Cheetor and Dinobot. Uh, yes, I know Cheetor doesn't have any eyes. At the moment uh, they fell out and I actually don't have a spare set to put in there. So at the moment he's kind of dead, uh, dead-eyed Cheetor, but I'll, uh, I'll run with that. I don't have a rat trap. I don't have a rat trap uh, to go with these guys. Yeah, I do have one in bot mode, uh, but it doesn't really scale. I wonder if we are gonna get an MP1. If not, I may have to get the, was it the Thrilling 30? I think maybe, or something like that, when they done rat trap and that worked really well scale-wise. I think he could actually be mounted on the back of MP Primal. And we could have Primal running on the back of Rhinox, you could have kind of like a three up sort of thing, which would be nice. Uh, but yeah, here they are all together. Right, let's get Rhinox transformed up because not everybody so loser like me collects two of these. <laughs> you want to disengage this next section here and these are tabbed in at the top, just behind that ear. And I want to slide that down. I don't have like a splodger or anything. There is only a small tab in there, just this little one here. But it's a little bit frustrating enough just to have to be able to access it. There we go, there's a little gap. Should just be able to bring that bit down. Come on, down we go. There we go. There, that one's out, that one's out, that one's out. And then there's this tab just in front here, which can also come away. And look, there is our Rhinox's bot mode head and oh he is looking fine there it is tab sections here untab those which allows this whole backpack piece to fold away and then if we look on the inside of the rhinox head we can actually move his eyes i think that's actually crazy that you can just look at look at that that's what they should have done with their uh, marvel legends giant man but, uh, you know, who am I to complain? Uh, and then this section here is going to come back. And this here is going to come down. Why are you not... Where are you getting stuck? You shouldn't be getting stuck anywhere. Like that. Like that. And then there like that. These shoulder tabs are going to come out like so. This panel here is also going to disengage, comes away from here. That's on a hinge, so you fold this piece up, fold over and flatten. This section can then come over the top. And then what we're going to do, we are going to fold this piece back on this hinge. It says like so, and this is gonna come in, and if you look here, this tab should, he says, line up with that. There we go. Tabbing in to the back of that headpiece. Look at that sculpt. Rhinox is gonna rotate fold back, uh, these arm tabs are going to split, which frees up this section here. That's going to come away. There we go, look. This is going to come up. And there's our other cannon. Woohoo! <laughs> I was 
never too sure. I didn't want to assume. But yeah, it hides away nicely just inside that torso piece. Right, this section here is going to just kind of rotate, come on out of the way and push back out of the way like so. These are going to fold. You've got a hinge here, fold that over. And you've got a hinge here that's going to fold up. Over on this side, hinge here, hinge here, that's going to fold up. Uh, this is on a, a double hinge, so that's going to rock upwards. Come on, over you go. And once that's over, it should just push and tab in. Looks like, come on, you can just collapse. You can just collapse. This here can come down like this. Right, rotating the shoulder allows us to bring this past. So these can come in to the center and then I can bring these shoulders out like so. It's starting to kind of come together, isn't it? We're getting there slowly, but surely uh, this should come down. And this hinge actually turns back on itself. Let's move these either side so they will clear it. Come on, move you a bit like this, move you a bit like this. You should now clear, clear. <clears throat> okay, you're not gonna clear. Right, let's tab the head in. Let's start where we mean to go on. There you go, right, head is tabbed in. This is gonna rock down, like so, and down, like so. And these are going to just locate, he says, come on, come on, come on, come on. Right, I got him in, just a bit of brute force and ignorance, you had to kind of nip it from behind to push it in. Uh, these will now bend on that hinge here, and they'll go inside, inside that torso, out of the way. And then I can bring those arms back down, and bring that arm back down. I imagine if that was his arm transformation. <laughs> oh, uh, these back panels come untabbed. His little tail is going to come untabbed. Oh, it's already starting to come apart. There we go. That, that's undone. That's undone. Uh, we can now bring these legs down, bring these legs down. And if you look here, there is a tab just on the underside of there. Is there an easy way to get in there? Looks so easy on the instructions. All right. Really, really stiff piece this is, look, that goes there. We should have something that looks like this underneath now with these folded in, those sections there, and that should then, with this tab out, come in, and he says, just push and tab in to that crotch panel. Now we need to uh, tackle these legs, don't we? Wowza. Right, let's open up this section here, uh, this bit here goes inside, this one comes out, this one goes up into that leg void, uh, this one's going to come down, that's going to fold inside, we're going to bring this foot plate down, that's going to come undone, come on, there you come, oh, this is very stiff this one here, All right. why are you not? Let's uh, flip the toe up, as so, I heels were, again, these are really stiff. There we go, that's the heel.
There we go. That's up. That's going to rotate like so. And then it's going to come up. This is going to fold inside like so. And inside like so. That's going to just rock backwards inside this leg here. And this is just going to close off around those legs, sealing off those big old muscular calves of his. There we go. Flatten the tab on the base of the foot and grabbing this whole mechanism and the top of the knee to rotate this around so that these line up. There we go, come around to this backpack panel. Uh, this is gonna fold down like so. These are gonna fold in, these are gonna fold in. This is gonna hinge backwards inside like so. And there's a retaining tab there, a retaining tab there and there. Come on, in you go, in you go. There, and there, and it's just going to sit up like so. And it kind of hides all of that skirt section. And finally, just to untab these hand pieces, uh, the thumb, I believe. Let's have a look. Uh, it's going to come up this way. Uh, this is going to push and locate in. And if you look here, there is a tab on the aft end of the hand that's going to line up with that hole. So just square that off, push that tab that in. These are going to extend and rotate so that when we bring the arm down, like so, we can bring the elbow down and then the arm can rotate like so. Thumb can come up and then the fingers, they can just be bent over like so. That can tap in there. There we have him. There we have our mighty, gorgeous looking Rhinox. Oh, I really don't like that ankle pivot. That nah, does not like me either. And there we have him in all of his glory. He's not bad. He's not bad at all. He's not the best. Um, I don't know. I, I guess I thought he was going to be slightly taller. I mean, he looks sensational. It's a gorgeous looking piece. I don't like these ankle tilts on mine. I'm not sure if it's like the pins. They feel kind of a little bit gummy. A little bit too much flex in there. It may just be uh, kind of a downside to the KO. But I mean, he definitely looks the part, doesn't he? Up close and personal. Really nice. Love how he holds the guns, sensational. Let's take a quick look at the articulation, the head can look up and down. We do have a Iron Giant style kind of squared off jaw there. Lots and lots of range on that. Uh, ratchety goodness on those shoulders. There's bicep rotation, bicep bend. Again, on those ratchets. Uh, highly articulated, ball socketed, pivoting. Fingers, uh, we do have waist in there, I believe. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's a waist, waist in there. Abdominal crunch, I don't think so. No, no abdominal crunch in there. Hip skirts are independent, but they are somewhat annoying. Legs can come forwards and backwards. Very soft ratchets on those. Upper thigh rotation, out to the side. Ratchety goodness. Nice bend on those knees, nice deep bend as well. And we get down to these feet. Uh, yeah, they're feet. <laughs> um, we have them on this hinge. There's a pivot there, look. And there is that hinge in there, which should allow them to rock. I just don't trust that. That's a very supple, very soft plastic. But my goodness me, doesn't he look the part? Backpack is exactly that, a backpack. 
but it's not overly different to what the animation shoe. Uh, he does always have a very kind of samurai-esque skirt thing going on there as well, doesn't he? But there we go. So, yes, he's very nimble. To give you an idea how he fares with the oversized figure, there's definitely a lot more going on with our MP comrade. Uh, this isn't a bad figure by any means, uh, but yeah, it just doesn't really have that same kind of MP look and feel. Uh, it's still a good looking piece. He is of the smaller, but uh, if you've got this guy, would I recommend getting him? Yes, yes I would. It, it, it is a much better piece, but this, please do not take away any of that fun from it. It is still a very fun piece. And here he is along with some of his other comrades uh, without going into my transmetals, etc. Uh, that's not too bad. That's not too bad at all. I think he looks the part. I believe he is meant to be smaller than Dinobot. I think Dinobot is the biggest out of those guys. Uh, I like how they look. I like how they all look together. I'm very much looking forward to some more figures from Transart as well to kind of fill my ranks. But yeah, he looks good. He comes with accessories. Uh, like I said, there are very in-depth reviews out there that cover absolutely everything in this. But this is just basically to have a look, see whether the KO is any good. And yeah, I think it is. Yeah, it's pretty good. Ticks all the boxes, does exactly what the original does. It's a little bit floppy around those ankles, but he does stand up. It's just kind of like a springy, uh, kind of a flex to those ankles, but everything holds where it should. Everything tabs in where it should. Absolutely looks incredible alongside these guys, in my opinion. And yeah, absolutely adore it. I have included a link in the description below where this can be purchased if you are interested in purchasing it. And until next time, for myself and the rest of the Collectibles household, thank you all very much for watching. Goodbye.